from Squallywood, it's the Dan and Run Show. Tell me a part of the body that begins with the letter T. <laughs> T, tip lead, an important body part. I mean, mechanism, and seemingly forgotten aspect of stance. Many coaches and instructors, when asked how much tip lead, they respond, it depends. That's lame. We will tell you how much and plenty more. I'm Dan. And I am Ron. We are the Dan, Dan and, and Ron, Ron Show. If it depends, we should know what it depends on. But first, let's see what tip lead is. Just like it sounds, one ski tip, the uphill tip, is slightly forward of the other. Then they match and gradually switch positions. When we talk of the importance of stance, usually fore aft and side to side are mentioned. These two directions cover the sagittal and frontal planes. But what about the horizontal plane? This oversight may be why Tipley does not get the respect it deserves. Well, that's the story of my life. No respect. I don't no respect. Tip lead may not be so much of what we do, but what we do in reaction to the slope. And that slope is where we ski. It is the vertical distance between the skis that ultimately determines the tip lead. If you turn less across the hill, your skis and your feet will be at less elevation difference than when you turn more across the hill. The important aspect is that tip lead changes every moment of the ski turn, reducing in size, then increasing. If you're turning, tip lead is changing. <laughs> Tip lead is the result of two factors. One, turning the feet. And two, the height difference between the feet or skis. We also know that when you're on a ski slope, the body will adjust to be in the strongest position. The end result is again, tip lead. Without tip lead, we are just not as strong. And strong is good. We are also not as athletic. Imagine what would happen if we tied our feet together so we couldn't adapt or adjust. With a tip lead. Ron, we don't have to imagine. Let's just watch mono skiing. Well, the body is trying to make angulation. But that is not really angulation. This is just side bending of the spine. And that's not athletic or healthy. So when the feet are tied together on the monoski, there is no tip lead. This crazy monoskier can only make angulation in the spine. This is not good for the spine. I hope he has a good chiropractor. When he gets on two skis, he can use the hip to make angulation. Now this is important, pay attention. Angulation is created by the hip only when it is flexing in the sagittal plane. If you try to make angulation in the frontal plane only, the gluteus minimus and the gluteus medius contract and get squished here between the greater trochanter and the ilium. Like a mechanical break, it cannot flex very far. But if you have tip lead, with equal ankle angles, the pelvis can rotate on top of the femurs and you can then flex in the sagittal plane. Flexing this way has huge range of motion, a very good way to create angulation, but you have to have tip lead first. What about this get square advice? If we look down at our skis, and make an imaginary line from tip to tip and from tail to tail. It makes a parallelogram, not a square. A square has four sides with 90 degree angles. The skier stance will only momentarily have right angles. Quit saying this square stuff. Well, there is that one moment when we get a rectangle.
Well, we better wrap this up with the how much tip lead. Three words, equal ankle angles. Ha, huh. say that three times fast. Equal ankle angles, equal, equal ankle angles, equal ankle angles, equal ankle angles, equal ankle ankle. <laughs> That means that the angle of the left ankle and the angle of the right ankle are the same. When the skier has equal ankle angles, the amount of tip lead will increase and decrease throughout the turn. This is the result of the vertical distance between the feet changing during the turn. Remember, tip lead is an important part of stance, specifically the part of stance that is in the horizontal plane. Tip lead which is a result of the vertical distance between the feet determines the degree that the upper body is facing down the hill. We should know that equal ankle angles is a heuristic, but it holds true 99% of the time. So lead change allows our body to angulate. Why don't we just make a ton of lead change and get more angulation? We do see this and it does work. The problem is the next turn, or should I say the connecting turns? It just takes geologic time to go from one set of edges to the new set of edges. Okay, we got a lot to unpack. In summary or conclusion? Huh, maybe we call this tips. Okay, tips for tip lead. Tip lead occurs by turning the feet. It is about the height between the feet. Stronger with tip lead. And more athletic. Allows for hip angulation. Don't confuse it with square. How much tip lead? Equal ankle angles. I'm Dan. And I am Ron. We, we are, are the Dan, Dan and Ron, Ron Show. Angles, equal young guy, I will do my arm August. Six times? Yeah. Really?